become more successful, you don't have to change who you are. You have to become more of who you are at your best. The first time that I stood on this stage at National Speakers Association in 2011, I couldn't afford the registration ticket. I had to put it on my credit card. I had no leads. I had no relationships with bureaus. I'd never talked to an agent. I didn't have a best-selling book. Most of all, I didn't have holds on my calendar. But I knew that I had a message that matters. I knew, I knew that I had a message that could change the world. Do you believe that you have a message that can change the world? Raise your hand if you believe that your message matters. Yes, we are here because our message matters. We can change the world, but we can't change the world if we can't get on the stage in the first place. If you believe that you have a message that matters, then nothing is more important for you than your topic. Giving a speech is easy compared to getting the speech. We work so hard to, to fascinate the audience that we forget about the audience before the audience, the decision maker. You can't fascinate the audience until you fascinate the audience before the audience. And this is confused me. I've created brands for a living. Why in the world can I not create a speaking brand? And so I went back and I thought to research that I had done in the world of advertising. I did an experiment in which I gave a thousand people two pairs of sunglasses that were exactly the same. The only difference was one pair had a Chanel logo and the other one didn't. And I said, how much would you be willing to pay for these two pairs of sunglasses? People were willing to pay 400% more for the pair with the Chanel logo, even though the glasses were exactly the same. So the glasses were a commodity, but the perception was completely different. And what I learned is that when we buy something, what we're actually paying for is something else entirely. So I applied this logic, and I thought, well, if a logo can increase perceived value by 400%, what, could, what does that mean for speakers? And so I took six months, and I researched how the speaking industry works. I looked for the hidden patterns, just as I would if I was working with a world-class brand. Why can some speakers charge more than others? Why do some speakers have booked calendars and others can't even seem to get a call back from the agent? Why do some people get on the stages they want? Why do some people change the world with their message? And I learned the answer is not necessarily about content and delivery. I learned that it's about positioning yourself as the ideal solution to their problem, to differentiate yourself in a way that is authentic based on your natural advantages as a speaker and as a thought leader. And so I began looking at what's the correlation between certain things that a speaker may have and how that correlates to their fee, how that correlates to how busy they are, their stature in the industry. I looked at things like, do they have a best-selling book? Are they well-known? Are they a, a specialized expert? But most tellingly, the difference that I found was a single word can be transformative in a speaker's career. I looked at the drop-down menu of topics, and I correlated that to how much the speaker was paid. And I found the speakers in the innovation category, on average, charged $5,000 more than speakers in the creativity category. Now, why is that? Why? Innovation and creativity, creativity are essentially the same topic. And as I looked into it, what I realized is innovation is an end. People will write a check for innovation, whereas creativity is perceived as a nice to have, not a must have. It's a, it's a means to an end. So think about this. How could your topic completely reposition you without changing your content, without changing your delivery, and most of all, without changing yourself? You don't have to change who you are, you have to become more of who you are. But then you have to own it. We work in a, a crowded, saturated, competitive, commoditized industry. And if we have a message that matters, we 
have a duty to stand out. And the way to do that is not by being better. It's good to be better. It's good to have perfect delivery, and it's good to have uh, perfect marketing materials. It's good to be better, but it's better to be different. It's good to be better, but it's better to be different. Different is better than better. Different is better than better every time. If you are the most famous speaker, you don't have to be fascinating, you don't have to be different, but if you are not the most famous speaker, you must be the most fascinating by differentiating yourself in one specific way. Now here's how to think of this when I talk about differentiation. Every time you're being considered for a, a speech or an event, a program, there are four other people there considering, four. The first one is the most famous the most famous person in the category. The second one is the most specialized expert for that industry. The third is the cheapest. That's not the one you want to be competing against. The fourth is the pet. You know, oh, we have Bob every year. Bob always comes back to the national meeting. And so when you're thinking about how to position yourself, it's not just a matter of, of uh, uh, putting, a, putting a, a word out there. It's about positioning that word as being the perfect solution to the specific problem that the client has. And the bigger the problem, the more motivated they are to book you. So at the beginning, when we were talking about this, and I asked you, do you have a message that matters? Do you have a message that matters? Yeah. Yes. If you do, then let's talk about your topic. Let's talk about how do we take your topic, how do we make it so distinct that you can't just take their, your name off of it and put another speaker's name on it. Different is better than better.